And now look out. No one's going to stop her, will they? Emma Tonegato. The next generation has arrived. Hello and welcome to a brand new season of the NRLW Wrap. It is great to have the footy back and it is a welcome back to Ruan Sims and Alana Ferguson. How good is it to have the footy back? So good. Can't so beat good. it. And we've got a few new segments this year on the show, so we've got plenty to look forward to. We've got the hat trick coming up. We've also got the team of the week to look forward to. Fergo's finest, where we're going to look through the best tries of the week. And, of course, we're going to look forward to all of the action for round two as well. But what stood out for you from round one? Round one? Plenty. <laughs> Loved it. Do Loved we have to narrow it, it down? I think, like, I think what I really liked about it was all the girls came in with a season under their belt, Harvey, well, state, state league series under their belts, Origin under their belts, and they just burst onto the scene, fit, ready to play footy. And off the back of it, I think you'll agree, Fergo, we just saw an even higher quality of footy. The Knights, who didn't win a game last year, came out of the block so strong against, you know, a team that's been leading this competition for years. That's is, isn't it? Like, we're not starting from scratch, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Um, the women have something to build upon. They haven't had to stop and, and sort of restart. And we're seeing that in even through round one's games, um, how impressive this competition is going to be, but also to look forward to. Like, there's still so many new combinations yeah. from these teams coming together. There aren't many teams that have sort of kept that solid base. Mm -hmm. Um, Spine-wise and whatnot, so I just think it's exciting to see how they kicked off round one, but where the game can can get to. And you'll see us turn up excited <laughs> every single week. But it is, it's it's so good because they've got those resources, the coaching staff, the professional environments, and the game's just going to go from strength to strength. We're going to take a look at the best headlines from round one and a brand new segment, the hat trick. We're going to take a look first off at Stephanie Hancock. Wowee, 40 years old <laughs> and a double. I mean, she had given it up and just said, you know what, I can't take it. Came back last year and she's back for another season with the Titans. This was very good to watch. Mm. I love the age drop, <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's important. I think the best thing about Steph is you, you've seen her mindset when she has come back, but she is, and I played with her um, years ago, Ruse played with her forever, but she's looking so fit. And you, you can sort of bypass the age thing, but it, it is massive, even within the NRL. You don't see players play till this age. She's been playing footy her entire life and working extremely hard to be able to be that fit, that powerful, and have that big um, of an impact in games consistently, which we've seen since she has come back, is, is impressive. And she looks happy. Yeah, she looks she's happy. Loving she's loving her footy. She's out there playing just the way that you would expect, loving it. And like to score two tries for a team is huge in anyone, mm -hmm. and in any case. But to come on and do it the way she did, I think, is is hugely important. It's good for the Titans because it gives them that leadership up front as well. And uh, you know, and you can see just how excited she was after scoring them too. So age shall not weary. Absolutely. Well, what about Emma Tonegado? Because Jamie Sauer, the Dragons coach, came out after this one and said. She is the best number one in the game and she has to start for Australia at the World Cup. Do you agree with that? Well, she's making a pretty good case for herself, <laughs> isn't she? Um, yeah, she's sensational. I think the conversation between the fullbacks, like it's the most contested position at the moment. But I think what Emma's brought from the get-go coming into the NRLW is that true professionalism. Mm. And you see it in the way that she plays. And not necessarily when the Dragons are always winning, but when they're in those tough moments. Um, she can take the hard carry. She can read the game brilliantly. She knows when to inject herself. Um, but yeah, just the professional mindset that she has and then throw on top of that her ability is freaky. It'll be hard to keep her out of the team. She'll 100% mm. be in that starting team. Um, I think the biggest conversation is how do you fit them all in? Mm. Who do you put into the outside backs? Because we've got some incredible athletes there as well. Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it plays out because there's some solid contestants. I think it's a good up. headache to have for a selector oh, yeah. as well. You want to have the best players at their peak, at their fitness, playing good footy. So I think this is a really exciting time in the game for this to be happening. Also, throw in there, like Bremner's come back from having two children, was outstanding Freaky. for the Roosters, outstanding for them. So it is an excellent conversation to have and it's a good headache. And I'm sure Brad Donald's probably sitting at home going, oh, it's a headache. But love it. He'd be loving having that there but it's not just her professionalism that Emma brings but it's just her decision making on the field with ball in hand defensively she organizes them really really well too and I think defensively is where I've seen the biggest change in the Dragons game in the last couple of seasons being this year.
So <laughs> it's exciting. And I think she has a lot to do with it. She's got a big voice and she knows how to use it. Exciting times for the Knights as well. They had mm. uh, Tamika Upton, uh, Millie Boyle, a lot. A big song and dance was made about all of the <laughs> brand new recruits. And my goodness, they delivered. They lived up to the hype, didn't they? For me, they've got the best pack in the game and that's what you need um, to, to start the base of your game plan off. And then throwing Jesse Southwell, Upton, I mean, they're pretty unbelievable. I think they were the, this was the most astute signings in the off-season, I believe. The Knights went out and bought Smart. They've also invested in youth, in Jesse Southwell. And, you know, Bobby Law has moved back to that favoured position of centre and I think it really suits her running style of football that she has. And I agree with Alana. Their pack is huge. Millie Boyle was massive for them. She ran for, again, over 190 metres on the weekend. Caitlin Johnston has that fire when she comes on and she really brings that energy and that power. So I think they're looking really good this year. And to, to knock off the Broncos first game up after not winning a game last season, that's massive for the club. Devastating to see Hannah Southwell. That was that injury, really though. big loss for the Knights, but also just a bit of a heart crusher, wasn't it? Especially having a yeah. sister in um, as a rookie coming through, 17 year old number seven. But that's, yeah, that's devastating. That's for huge. The so she's out for the season with mm. that ACL injury, and that's huge. And again, that puts a dent in the Gillaroos for the end of the year because I'm 100% certain she would have been in the mix. Well, there were lots of standouts from round one, so it's time to take a look at Roo's team of the week for the opening round of the season. So, Roo, take us through your team for round one. Yeah, it was hard to uh, hard to pick a team this week for the reasons that we've spoken about, especially at fullback. I've given Sam just the edge because I thought she was instrumental in the Roosters' win on the weekend. And Jesse Southwell was huge for the Knights. Samima so Taufa, massive. For the Eels, I think people don't appreciate the amount of work that she actually gets through. She gets through a ton of work in the middle and she shifts out wide. Isabel Kelly was massive for the Roosters. First time captaining, first up win, 100% strike weight. Right, you've got to be pretty happy with that. Again, and Keely Davis through the middle uh, for Dragons came up with that beautiful last pass for McGregor. It was fantastic. But the couple of players I did want to highlight is someone I've spoken about uh, before, Sam Bremner. You know, like, she's got plenty of energy when she gets the ball in hand. But have a look at this. 171 run metres, 11 tackle breaks, two line breaks, three line break assists, and uh, zero errors. Zero errors. Considering how much she gets her hands on the ball, yeah. I think that is incredible, that, that work rate. And she even made eight tackles as well throughout the game. And one of them, or two of them were one-on-one -on -one tackles. So that's pretty impressive outing. And Jessie Southwell, look, Alana and I spoke about her at length on Sunday night. She's got a right foot step. She's got a left foot step. She's got a kick. Defensively, she's massive. As a seven, she ran for 144 metres on Sunday night. And the kicks that she put in, she only put in six kicks, gained 156 metres, a number of them were number of them were under heaps of defensive pressure and came up with the right kick at the right time. And I thought for a debut as a 17 year old, where she had to get permission to actually Incredibly come and play as if she's 17. Was amazing, was absolutely amazing. And so she was deservedly, for me, player yeah. of the round. Oh. Absolutely. Now, Joey had uh, just given her the biggest rap in the lead up <laughs> and yeah. said that he'd actually worked with her. But mm -hmm. when you look at the two of them, it's actually, I think we've got a bit of vision. Side by side, we've got Jesse and Joey. So oh. this is the eighth in his heyday. Yeah, no wonder he, Looks he loves her. Little mini me. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Split screen, there you go. But you know what, that's the, that's the best and the biggest point to make is it takes a good footballer to recognise a good footballer. Sometimes when you're watching a game of footy, you might just see, you know, the person scoring the tries or that one big hit. But if you can watch a footballer and see every the finer details and everything they do within their game, Joey's not talking about necessarily just that one try and that one step. Mm. That's a that's an awesome example to mm. add. But we might not see that from Jesse this week. What we'll see is is the way she kicks the ball, the perfect ball drop when she's um, getting her team back into the game and managing the game, and, and just those little ju yeah, just those fine the little details that only footballers see, she is something else. Like we, we genuinely haven't seen anyone like that in our game yet. No. And that's her first game. Yeah. Like, it's, it's insane. And, like, the thing is, as well, it's it's the setup for that play. It's mm. not necessarily just the play mm. itself. So it's, it's Higgins ensuring that she gets that s specific pass out wide, three players out wide, so that you can get Southwell one-on-one -on -one with either a second row or if you've flipped a forward to that side, 
that's what it's all about and that's what Joey brings into that side. Yeah, he's worked individually with her, but also, you know, Bedsy's working with the nines as well. He's getting in there and he's doing work with them. So it's it's the holistic approach that they've taken this year that I've been so impressed with the nines. Can't wait to see Southwell over the next year mm. or two, even mm. five years. Twelve. Now, <laughs> a brand new segment, Fergo's Finest. We're oh, going to yes. take a look at the best tries from the week. We've got a little prop. We do. What you got for us, Fergo? Let's get her up. All right, number three, I'm guessing. Are we starting with? Yes, wherever you want to start. Who what we got? Here? This is your segment. And we're going to add right. to the um, add to the board each and every week. All right, let's start with number three. Uh, okay, sure. how? How very good. Are we starting with number three? Brigginshaw. Let's start with the Brigginshaw one, okay? The Brigginshaw kick. Okay, beautiful. So the Broncos, obviously, one of those teams to beat, but Ali Brigginshaw in the lead up to this play was involved with getting that territory. And then the kick selection and execution was it was perfect. And it's one of the one of the parts uh, of the women's game that's that's growing and increasingly getting better. Um, but there's only ever sort of been a few great crickers, uh, kickers and Ali Brigginshaw has always been one of those. Um, so that was brilliant from her. Tegan Berry. What wow. an exciting <laughs> player. But it's what she, again, she's one of those people you want to see in full flight. She's got so much speed to burn and read that intercept perfectly. And we just spoke about Jessie Southwell. This try has got to be up there. But her as a complete package was insane. But to be able to sum up the defensive line, again, the lead-up play to this, but back herself. Rue, you spoke about her her metres in the game. And that's what Jessie Southwell did, was she took the line on first. That was in the yep. first half, which then just relieves her players outside her of so much pressure. Because next time, the defence don't know if she's going to run it herself, if she's going to pass mm. it, and that just frees up her ball runners. But brilliant decision to be able to go herself then and back it. 100%. Um, and I think we're going to see uh, a few more highlights, maybe even a try from Jessie so in the future. So this is my order. So, so I've Jessie got gets top John's, spot. No, yeah, no, Jessie gets number one. That was just freaky. Um, Ali Brigginshaw's kick. Accurate. Loved it. And then how very good. Can't leave out an intercept try and Tegan Berry in full flight. Loved it. And how good. Tegan's one. That's Brings me back to North Sydney Oval a few years ago when she played under 18s. Did yes, exactly the same did. thing for yeah, New South Wales. Yeah, it's not the first time we've seen Just it. Sprinted off. And Brigginshaw's one, like we spoke about this on the call on Sunday night. What I was so impressed with Ali's one is that they'd actually created that numbers overlap three or four times in the lead up to that play over the previous number of sets of six. They couldn't get the ball out there because the edge defence was rushing in and shutting it down so the pass couldn't get over the top. And Ali said, too easy, I'm just going to dink it over. Easy. And uh, landed it on a dime. So we're going to add to this really each good. and every week. We've got some absolute cracking games coming up this weekend. The Broncos and the Roosters. But I think many will remember the last time these two sides met, it was a monumental upset. Premiers in NRLW but standing in their way are the Roosters. Amber Hall from a standing start. Amber Hall with the first try of the game. Aiken, Upton. Oh, what a run. Amy Turner oh. sets up Robinson through the hands. McGregor, good pass. Isabel Kelly. Six point lead for Brisbane. Here come the Roosters. Kelleher. Throws a dummy, goes on a race, she'll score! The Roosters are in front! Brisbane, they're trying something, but they're not going to go anywhere! And the Roosters are into the grand final! Brisbane are out! Oh, how good was that? One of the best games we have been a part of, and I know we were all there at Leichhardt Oval. It was an absolute epic, and the two sides face off again this weekend. The first match of the round, we'll take a look at the team list. Only a, a very minor change for the Broncos. Brianna Clark comes onto the bench and the Roosters are unchanged from that side that got an epic win in round one as they look to go back to back. But what about Jamie Chapman? Very impressive, wasn't she? Obviously a big hole with Tamika Upton there, but how crucial is she to their chances this week? I think she's going to be wanting to get her hands on the ball a little bit more. I think she was just sort of finding where she was going to be popping up in the line. She came up with some good runs and some really good touches, but I think especially if they can get quick play the balls and then Lena Dutzi in the second play off the back of it works an offload, that's where Chapo needs to be popping up, sniffing around and, and finding her way through there because I think there'll be plenty of joy for her there. Or even Amber Hall, if she just stay, stays a little bit wider, gets off Amber Hall, because Amber came up with a really great offload previous to that. And what about Izzy Kelly? We well, know 
know that if the Roosters win, you're probably going to have an absolute blinder <laughs> from Izzy, their captain. I don't think she knows anything else. <laughs> Seriously. Well, her work rate is unmatched, isn't it? But she'll always be in the highlights because she puts herself in the action. I think that's what the Roosters' game plan works through really well. They use their outside backs to get their set started when they need to get on the front foot and their forwards have been hammered. So you'll see Izzy pop up there. But also her work both sides of the ruck, linking up with Jess Sergis or sticking to her left edge. And this is her on the right. Already we've seen highlights of her playing on both sides. That's what she does. She offers um, different points of attack. She's got that speed and the power. You give her the ball close to the line. It's either an easy two-on-one pass because she draws a couple of defenders or she just thinks, stop it, I'm going to run right over him and she does it nine times out of ten. So she's an un unbelievable player, but credit to the way that she trains and applies herself. And I also think we've seen Izzy's game go to the next level since NRLW and mm. since getting some uh, obviously really particular coaching because she knows how to use her assets really well. Um, yeah, she, and, and she's their captain. She's been leading from the front. But, yeah, I could honestly wrap Izzy for 10 minutes, Forever which I will ever. <laughs> next week. Because we've sure other, be, other we'll be games to get to. Yeah. Yeah. The Eagles, though, if they overmark her, then Jess Sergis will start That's running it. riot yeah. as well. So yeah. I actually really like, I agree with Virgo, the game plan that they've come up with where they're shifting both centres, both sides, makes it really difficult to, to play up against Tell that extra origin, number. Isn't it? It is. Weapons galore for the Roosters. <laughs> now the uh, the Eels and the Dragons, this is going to be the second match of the round. Couple of changes for the Eels after going down in round one. Zali Faye comes onto the wing and Taylor Preston as well at six for the Eels. Now Elsie Albert has been named for the Dragons. She was a late withdrawal with an ankle injury. But Tegan Berry, no doubt, is crucial to the Dragons' chances this week, Andrew. Yeah, she will be. Well, she finishes off so beautifully. That's what we see out of her. I think if she can be playing and linking up with Emma Tonegato out the back, make sure that her timing's there, I think that's going to definitely add some spark out wide for the Dragons. But it's also going to be Davis through the middle. Holly Wheeler was huge for them as well. Kezi got through a ton of work too. And Emma just running off the back of that. And also, like we didn't even mention Talia Fui-Mayona, who's come back from that shoulder injury. Uh, is really great to see her back running around. And Gail Broughton coming across from Rugby Sevens. That was a, a big hole to fill with Bovetti Welsh, obviously going down with an ankle injury. So once again, that's big shoes to fill for Gail this season. Yeah, I think we saw glimpses of how dangerous she could be in round one, but the Eels game plan, it, it, it didn't necessarily play out too well. I thought that they were pretty weak in defence at times and also um, their kicking game didn't set their attack up to be super dangerous, which is where you'll see her come into play. Taylor Preston gets a crack in the halves and I think their kicking game, to nail that, to be able to build a little bit of pressure, find a little bit of territory. That's when we'll see um, players like Rach come into it. But, yeah, they've got to work on the basis of their game plan, and I like that change in the halves. Yeah, she's got a good boot, Tay. Mm. She's got a good boot. So they need it. And especially when they move around. I think and people also need to remember, Gail's just come over from Rugby Sevens. Emma's first game last year was a little slow as well. She's just finding her feet, figuring out where she needs to be, when she needs to be there. And I think that you know, this week is going to be very different for Gail. You can see her kicking game is huge. She's got a great boot on her and she's starting to really read the game. So I think she's this week is going to be a big one for Gail. Well, the final match of the round is the Knights and the Titans. We've got that one on Nine Now and Nine Gem. And oh, we mentioned before Hannah Southwell, a heartbreaking ACL injury. That means Simone Kapani comes into the side. That's really the only change there for the Knights. But in terms of the Knights and the Titans, we saw in round one again. She had an incredible season at the beginning of the year, but Avania Polite, what an absolute weapon. Well, she's such a gun player, isn't she? And she moves into the centres um, for this game. I think the biggest thing for the Titans is how can we get her involved in the game? Not necessarily more, but at the right times. She doesn't always need early ball. Uh, but when it's on, it, it's it's crucial to get the footy in her hand. So, again, like they're, they're a side that's come in and, and in key positions, they've had a little bit of movement. That's, ga that's game one. They need to have a little bit of patience. I like that they haven't changed things around too much. Um, but I dare say we'll see Varney in some good ball a little bit more and she'll just tear the Knights to shreds. And Caitlin Johnston for the Knights. <laughs> Talking about it. tearing people to shreds. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. She is huge. I mean, we saw her just rip, tear, bust in origin. She did the same thing again for the Knights on Sunday night. She brings great energy. Like, her coming back, that elbow injury for her at 
the start of this year season was really tough to take for the Knights because you can just see the impact mm. that she had. Well, that, that last try was when she just came she on off the bench. just come on, yeah. Come on, she and did a big hit and went over for a try. Like, yeah, it was massive. And I've also got to tip my hat to Ron Griffiths, the coach, because with the Knights, with 10 minutes to go or 15 minutes to go, they'd only used five interchanges. So they still had five to go, which meant he could rotate through his big forwards. He took Millie off with 10 to go. And I'm sure people would have been saying, why are you taking one of your best front rowers off? Three minutes later, he puts her back on and he just rotated them and it just kept the pressure on there for on the Broncos. So I thought that's really smart. Caitlin's going to be huge again. All right, to finish off with, Rue, your tips for this round? Uh, I am tipping Roosters, Dragons and the Knights away to win. Alana, here you go. Yeah, I tip the same. To be honest, the first one I struggled with, with the Roosters Me and too. the Broncos, because I really think the Broncos will... Um, want to and need to come out and, and make a point. They're at home, they're at Suncourt, which is huge. So I was a little bit like, oh, which way am I going to go? But the Roosters proved themselves too much to me. But uh, yeah, I've got the same tips mm. as Rue. All right, there you go. I was umming and ahhing also about the Roosters and the Broncos, but eventually went with the Broncos. So it's going to be an absolutely cracking round. We'll uh, see you both at the matches on the weekend. So we've got the Roosters right. and the Broncos on Channel 9 and so too that final one with the Knights taking on the Titans. But we'll see everyone next week on this brand new edition of the NRLW Wrap.